And finally, the referees convened. They talked to each other. One guy said, I saw it as a touchdown. Another person did, and that is the right call. Um, and a big one and a very important one that you're going to need to get in a district game. So good for the referees to uh, conjure up and uh, talk it over. So they, they, uh, they ended up checking there with, uh, with Mike Ferreira. Up in the booth. So there we go. Okay, uh, having some uh, headset issues. So uh, uh, you know what? A gutsy call. Warbington should have caught that ball. It looked like initially he did. And then as uh, he was hit right at the goal line, the ball looked like must have come loose. And we were shielded from that vision. But, of course, all the players reacted. So tough to tell up here. But, hey, the, the line judge signal touchdown. I was looking at him. That's what they, you know, you follow the officials. So a, uh, a gutsy call, Brian. I'm going to still, hey, this is not Monday morning quarterback. As we just said a minute ago, I would have kicked to go up seven. And we'll see how it affects Cypress Bay now as uh, Cameron Rigby with a nice run upfield to the 17-yard line, it looks like. That's a big gain of seven. And now Miramar has some momentum. And, Brian, anytime you go for it on fourth down, deep in an enemy territory and you don't get it, boy, that's just like a momentum filled with almost like what a turnover feels like. And let's see what this does as Rigby will be uh, taken down in the backfield. That's a loss of four. Griffin Josephold, who has done a really nice job as an aggressive defensive back, has uh, been pretty much crashing those running outside lanes all night. And so far we saw both teams go for it on fourth down. Earlier in the first quarter, uh, Miramar was able to go for it on fourth and three, was able to convert, but on the flip side for Cypress Bay, them not being able to convert. So you're seeing aggressiveness on both teams, but when you're deep in the territory like that, Mike, and you go for it on fourth down, you almost have that feel of like you're going for broke. Yeah. We saw it last week where Northwestern, they went for it on fourth down. They didn't get it. Granted, it was the fourth quarter, but... But I didn't, I didn't see. I didn't feel the need, though, in this game or this feel the urgency for Cypress Bay to do that. I mean, are they really are they really that much, uh, you know, ur urgency to get that? I mean, if you kick, you're up a seven, and you know you can't lose then at that point unless they go eight. I, I don't know. You have a, a top-notch kicker who can uh, kick at the next level. Granted, the ball was on uh, on an angle, but it would have been about a 28-yarder. That's an interesting call. And to go for a home run on a fourth and three, you, you could just try to run it up the middle, get those three yards. All right, so an illegal substitution penalty makes it a third and long for Nick Genty, who will uh, run right in, lower his head at about the 20-yard line. He'll eat it himself. He's close to the first down. And let's see where the spot will be. And, that is a and it is nine. a first down. Wow, that's a big one. He got nine first yards down. on the carry. And, uh, boy, for Cypress Bay, they've got a, the defense has to be thinking, geez, we should have stopped him there on that third down and eight. There's a high snap. Genty will hand it off to Rigby being strung out again, and he gets dragged down. And I tell you something, this Cypress Bay defense is absolutely clogging up all the lanes. There is no Drano in sight for this Miramar offense because all these lanes are chock full of uh, traffic and congestion. And the offensive line is doing its job. It's just the linebackers for Cypress Bay. A good tackle there by Griffin Gospel uh, being there. They're playing disciplined football. Mike, this is a defense that just averages 14 points uh, allowed on defense. It's going to be very, very tough for this Miramar offense to come back. And it uh, looks like Tenaris Robinson was uh, under, almost underneath that ball. They're going to call it incomplete. Robinson just a little uh, dump off check down pass to him, and he was not able to get his arms underneath that. So it would have just had minimal gain on that play. And it is a third down and 11 now for Miramar on the line of scrimmage right shy of the 20 yard line in cypress bay's three wins they've allowed just 12 10 and 6 points defensively Genty dropping back has time fires over the middle and that could be pass interference it is pass was uh, broken up by marquise dudley gordon but it was broken up because he crashed into jante smith and a bad move there by dudley gordon on a third and 11. he completely missed time that and that's an automatic first down and it gives this miramar offense which let's face it has struggled a lot of this year against quality competition brian that gives him some second life here with 93 seconds left in this third quarter and he did that because it was his man but he had two other players it was triple coverage he did not need to be that aggressive no. That he wasn't going to come down with that football. It was good teamwork and being there at the right time, but you just go a little bit too aggressive by uh, Dudley Gordon, who is going both ways. Jantee shotgun. Here's a deep pitch to the right to Alex Lee, looking to get to the outside. He gets there, and uh, he's bottled up, though, as he tries to get outside the numbers. And a flag comes down. This may be a late hit or a face mask. So now all of a sudden, Cypress Bay is slowly unraveling, and Again, in a game that they should probably be up seven. That's they decide to go for it on that fourth and three a few minutes ago, and now Miramar 
He's a touchdown away from grabbing the lead. 33 seniors on this Cypress Bay team, and for Coach Guandolo, he's usually known for having the discipline. Uh, he's known as everything running on Coach G time. They're showing up 10 to 15 minutes early to practice. Uh, they usually get there pretty early. Uh, in order to be on time, that means you got to be 10 minutes on time. Usually that means discipline on the team, but for Cypress Bay entering tonight, 30 penalties in four games uh, for about 240 yards they give up. Here's a pitch to the left this time. They just reverse the formation, and Alex Lee churning at the 35 to the 30 to the 28. Here comes a flag, though. This might be a hold on the Miramar offensive line or maybe a face mask. But Alex Lee was carrying tacklers upfield to the 28-yard line. And this actually could be on Cypress Bay. How about that? Two straight penalties. If it's Cypress Bay, yes, this is going to be a face mask on Cypress Bay. Suddenly, two penalties is moving them down the field, followed by a big offensive play. This Cypress Bay defense is unraveling before our eyes. They've been playing good football up until this, but now suddenly the discipline being a factor for the Lightning. Miramar 2-2, two and two. Cypress Bay 3-1. and one. Both teams 1-0 and oh in the district. Ball is on the Cypress Bay 25-yard line. Miramar has it down by four. A minute to go here in this third quarter. Genty under center, kicks a man in motion. Now a deep pitch to the right again to Cam Rigby, and he's dragged. No, he keeps his footing. Uh, now he uh, turns it upfield inside the numbers, down to the 15, to the almost the 10-yard line. Now he's at the, oh, they'll back him up to the 11. That's a gain of 15 for Cam Rigby. How about that? I thought his knee was down on that play. It looked like he was dragged in the backfield. He must have kept his footing and got 14 more. You know, running to the outside, he had some fullback help. He had offensive line help. He needed to just shake that linebacker. So credit him with breaking that tackle and running and making a big play. And suddenly now they are moving deep into Cypress Bay territory now. Cam Rigby with another run, this time to the five off the left tackle. Nico Marley brought him down by the shoulder pads. Now we've got a Cypress Bay timeout. How about that frenetic pace? It was just boom, run, run, run run no huddle we're gonna go flip it around and go right go left and the Cypress Bay defense you know what uh, they uh, uh, granted they had that third and 11 and that pass interference penalty by Dudley Gordon was huge but uh, that last offensive drive did this defense no favors because you know what they missed that fourth and three that means the defense had to hold them here you know the Miramar's not gonna kick field goals they don't really kick uh, they don't have a place kicker that's uh, worth the compliment of like a Cypress Bay so you're forcing your defense to say hey you can't give up a touchdown that's a lot of added pressure absolutely and they did great on the first two plays Miramar had that football and then on the third and eight where uh, John T was able to run down get that first down things started to ravel from that point a couple of penalties you mentioned the big one uh, the pass interference called on Dudley Gordon and then the play afterwards a personal foul on the far side of the field and then another one on the face mask and then a big run by Rigby uh, things are just going Miramar's way on this drive Mike and uh, being down just for 10 to 6 this is just a great great district game neither of these teams want to lose and now you're seeing the Miramar off and step its play up, living up to the expectation of what's needed for him. First and goal from the five, Miramar down 10 to six. There's a give to Alex Lee and he's dragged down. No gain on the play. Keon Auguste got him. The defensive end coming off the left edge. And now it brings up a third down and goal from the five. So you know, Miramar Mike, obviously, sorry Brian, in four down territory with 18 seconds left, third quarter. You know, they try to run that outside. This is the time where you just run in between the fat uglies, right in the middle. Right behind Miranda, who's the big center for Miramar. Here's Lee trying to get to the outside corner. He reaches out for the pylon. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's out maybe at the one. Wow, Alex Lee tried to get outside the numbers. They'll say he's out at the half-yard line. So now it's a fourth down and a, about an inch to go here. Fourth you know, and goal inside the one. That referee was right in prime area. All, all that he needed to do, Mike, was just extend the football out. He'd get into that end zone. But at the half-yard line right now on a fourth down, uh, Miramar is going to call a timeout, a smart play. But what an what a aggressive run. Uh, that we saw right there, Mike. But if he extends the football, you're in for six. So it's a fourth down and goal from inside the one-yard line. 
and from Miramar, I just, I, I, as you mentioned, I take Nick Genty, let him run uh, right behind those big uglies. You, you know, you risk a fumble on a handoff. I mean, obviously, you hand it off to a back. He's still going to be a couple yards uh, away. I just, I take Nick Genty, run him straight up the gut, and uh, see if you can take the lead. That's good. Yeah, so, well, actually, they got a first down. They got, a, they brought a, hey, how about a smart time out there to give the chain gang a chance to go out there? And they got a first down. So, XNA, the QB uh, draw on a fourth down. Now it may come on a first down. <laughs> this is going to be the shortest first down that you got. You have first down in about first half an inch. Inside the yeah, first and goal from the uh, half yard line, and Miramar poised to take the lead. And for Cypress Bay, this has been a game of what if so far. No doubt about that through three quarters. Genty under center. High formation behind him. Here's the give to Alex Lee, and he is grabbed down from the uh, shoulder pads from behind. and. He did not get in. No gain on the play. Again, Keon Auguste got him. Not much room for Cypress Bay. If you tackle any of these ball carriers, you got to make sure they don't go forward. And uh, let's see here. Is there a flag down or is that the end of the quarter? That is the end of the quarter. And we have played three quarters here at Miramar. It is 10 to 6 Cypress Bay. Miramar knocking on the door a half yard away. We'll be back for quarter number four here on QAM. You're listening to the South. How long? I can't hear myself. Thank you. Mike. Because I have the spot that's 20 seconds long right now, and then I have the rejoin. Before you pick up your show, we love you. We all love you. This is the South Florida High School Football Show. Brought to you by Tico People. Ready? Yep. Brian Saw on your home for high school football. 560 WQAM. We do sports. Second and goal from the half yard line, so they got uh, three more chances to get a half yard. Odds are in your favor, but again, uh, this has uh, been a very stingy uh, defense tonight for Cypress Bay, as it has been for Miramar on when those two teams have uh, squared off in that way. This has not been a, a very glorious game to watch for offense, but uh, sometimes you got to win up. We saw earlier in this game on a third and short, the quarterback, Nick Janty, just took it right up the middle. Let's, let's see if they call that right now here on second down. Genty, he will hand it off, it looks like, to Alex Lee. He's in for a touchdown. That was easy. Alex Lee just a one-yard run. And now Miramar with a 12-10 lead. You'd say kick the extra point to go up three. That's not a guarantee. Have to see if they go for two. No, they're going to bring out the extra point unit. Now this becomes a critical extra point, Brian, only up two. And, and with the team that Miramar is playing, having the better kicker. Yeah, this is something where you're going to need to see a better push. Special teams looks a little bit more alert, especially after, ha after having the last point after attempt get blocked. So a very uh, pivotal point right now. You want to have that comfortable three-point lead. Michael Allender is the kicker. It'll be Tanaris Robinson with the hold. The snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. So Allender puts it through. It is now 13-10, and Brian, I'm going to keep harping on it until this game is over. Cypress Bay could have had a 13-6 lead. I mean, again, you, no guarantee that uh, um, that Jonathan Semarine would have made that kick, but you, odds are he would have. He's got a cannon of a leg, one of the best kickers in Broward County. Instead, on a fourth and three, in field goal range, to put you up seven, you go for it. I uh, I don't get it. Uh, that's just one that uh, it, you know when you when you even out the score so you know you can't get beat on a touchdown. To me, you got to do that. This pendulum has been swinging throughout this game. You saw it from both sides. You saw Cypress Bay score that touchdown, then get the football back on a fumble and suddenly go for that four and out uh, that or go for it on fourth down, not convert like you had mentioned. That those are big plays. Don't get me wrong, but three 15-yard penalties oh, no, you're right. on that side right. of the ball is yep. the reason why Miramar is in this football game. Well, and and, and the first one came uh, inside uh, Miramar's territory by Marquise Dudley Gordon, the pass interference. I mean, on a third and 11, you know, they get the ball back. It's a different story. Here's a squib kick. Montgomery will take it from the 30 upfield to the 35-40 and some really good field position. Again, I, I 
cannot stand the squib kick. I never understand why it's uh, always implemented. Cypress Bay, now they got to do 60 yards and they score. 30 yards and they're in field goal range legitimately for Semarine. Good to see Alex Montgomery back on the field. Yeah. Uh, he did get hurt on their last offensive play, but uh, catching that football, running it up there, he took a hit, and he's not in this snap. He's walking off the field right now, too, and the, their star wide receiver uh, going to uh, Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons. Uh, Montgomery, their leading receiver, he's got 12 receptions for 338 yards entering tonight. The second leading receiver, two receptions. A couple of ACC-bound offensive players on this Cypress Bay unit. NC State, of course, will welcome Matt Days. And you talk about Wake Forest getting Alex Montgomery. So they'll see each other uh, throughout their collegiate careers. That's always nice. Matt Days is bottled up. Nowhere to go. This Miramar defense has absolutely just been dominating tonight. They have been outstanding. Nowhere to go as Days lost about a half yard at the 40-yard line. And that's been the story of this game. They try to run halfback dives up the middle, but next thing you know, the big uh, defensive tackles have been stopping Cypress Bay. If they want to run the football, they got to run to that outside. you got to use that speed because right now your offensive line is just not getting it done. 11-18, so almost a full fourth quarter to go in this game. Miramar, the home team, up 13-10. In this district battle against Cypress Bay. The Lightning have been sloppy tonight. They've capitalized on great field position. They have yet to prove that they can march down the field and get this critical score. Two to the left, offset eye for Durante Lewis. Pressure comes from the outside, steps up in the pocket, has a man open on the sideline. It is caught at the 35 by Christopher Maxwell and Miramar's 35-yard line. A beautiful pitch and catch from Durante Lewis. And for the first time, Brian, he really showed the ability to stay in the pocket, step up away from that outside pressure, and deliver a nice soft floating pass to Maxwell for a huge first down. And that play happened because of what you just said, stepping up in the pocket. He was going to get tackled by the left end, but instead stepped up, made a big-time throw, and that's what big-time quarterbacks do. They're going to say the ball's at the 34, so one yard better for Maxwell on that hookup. A beautiful pitch and catch of 25 yards, so Lewis now under center, and here's the give to Dudley Gordon, the backup tailback. Keeps his feet after getting hit initially and stumbles forward to the 31, and now here's a late flag coming in. I don't know if it was a hit or maybe a taunt, Brian. It might have been taunting. And it looks like this one could be on Miramar. Dudley Gordon was already on the ground. And this one might have been a, a bit of uh, showboat uh, stuff going on. Let's see. It's a personal foul on Miramar. That one hurts. And now for the Patriots, their defense will be backed up. And Cypress Bay sniffing the end zone down three. They've got uh, the momentum here on this drive. You know, big time game like this. Players are playing. Uh, their blood is uh, pumping a little bit faster than you normally uh, would. But a big game like this. Mike, we're seeing a lot of aggressiveness, both sides of the ball. Referees going uh, with the offense uh, and benefiting uh, them on these penalties. We saw Miramar benefit from it. Now we're seeing Cypress Bay benefit from it. Six players returning on this Cypress Bay offense from a year ago. And their three best all back and trying to do some big things tonight. Line of scrimmage is the 15-yard line. Durante Lewis rolling to his right, a hard run. Keeps his eyes up field, and Montgomery... Has it? No, they're going to say it's incomplete. Popped out of there. It looked like DeCambu Graves was right there to knock that ball away. Looks like Montgomery had it for a moment. Just a little dump off over the middle, and DeCambu, uh, DeCambu destroyed Montgomery right as that ball got in there to pop it out. You know, a very physical zone. Miramar was just running right there, and it has been a long night for Alex Montgomery. Every time he touches the football, every time the football gets thrown yeah, to him, he's he, gets, he gets abused, and you got to credit the heart on that young man being out there trying to make some plays for his offense his senior year. Second down and 10 for Cypress Bay. Down a field goal here, 10-16 to go fourth quarter. At the Miramar 15, Lewis under center. Jumbo tight end set. Here's the, the give to Josh Kaiser straight ahead to the 10, to the 5 at the goal line. He's in for a touchdown. Josh Kaiser, just a little inside fullback dive, goes all the way for the score. A 15-yard run, and Cypress Bay has retaken the lead. Boy, this is football now in the district. Neither team wanting to lose. Both want to go home tonight knowing that they are 2-0 and um, in the district. And who would have thought as good of a defensive uh, matchup we saw in the first three quarters. Now you have two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Uh, answering back, just a uh, really aggressiveness as the extra point is good. 16-3, to a three-point game. Mike, th this fourth quarter has been a game in amongst itself completely different than the first three quarters. Yeah, the extra point good by Jake Bray. How about uh, 
Kaiser, who just, you know, just like a little fullback uh, give there, uh, try and get some yards, and he burst through. Almost uh, you weren't expecting him to get through a hole like that. Probably the defense wasn't either. So how about Josh Kaiser getting in on the mix? Matt Days has had a hard time tonight, but Kaiser, uh, who's able to spell him and give him a, a breather, delivers, and uh, that's what Cypress Bay needs. They, uh, their depth has been a question mark. Uh, for the last couple of years of trying to find guys to back up the starters, and they did there. So Kaiser gives Cypress Bay a 17-13 lead, 10-08 to go, so still a boatload of time, but now Miramar's got to answer again. Yeah, and how about uh, really a tale of one different quarter in this game? As you mentioned, the first three were you know, uh, just pretty much deadlocked in a sluggish offense, great defense performance, and now you have an explosion here in this fourth. Here's the kick by Semarine. That'll go by eight yards deep in the end zone, and it's pretty much a guaranteed touchback. And now a flag down, as it looks like uh, you had uh, Christian Neesmith and for Miramar. Looked like uh, Demarius Graham were locked up. They each kind of swung at each other. This will either be offsetting or it'll be on Miramar, as uh, Graham might have been caught there getting that last uh, retaliatory attack. We're going to have a block in the back. Wow. How do you have a block in the back on a touchback? That's, that's kind of odd. Huh. Interesting. Wow. That's uh, that's a big penalty. Uh, it's going to move them back to the 10-yard line. That's half the distance. Uh, not the way that you want to start up uh, against the you, Miramar you, offense that's you, been struggling. You don't usually see a block on the back on a touchback, but uh, hey, what are you going to do? So right. it'll back them up to the 10-yard line, as you mentioned, Brian. And for Cypress Bay, this is like a flip-flop of uh, the last quarter when they had Miramar backed up, had a third and long, and committed a pass interference penalty. Well, let's see which side steps up here in this fourth quarter. Remind everybody, if you want to watch SouthFloridaHighSchoolFootball.com, we have live streaming video if you want to watch these last 10.08 uh, in the fourth quarter. Nick Genty in the shotgun from his end zone. He'll swing it right to Alex Lee, upfield to the 15-20. Outside the numbers to the 25-yard line. That's a great play to get some yards and open things up. That was Cameron Rigby, I beg your pardon. He got 14 on the play. And I like that. You know what? It's not just a swing pass to a wide out. You're getting the running back on the move who kind of floats out from the from the backfield. I like that a little bit. It already gets the, the guy in rhythm and uh, going forward. Cypress Bay likes to jam the box, put a lot of men out there, so I love it. You have them out there on the island, throw the football, give it to them in the open field. Why not run it the opposite side? Now they run the opposite side this time to Alex Lee. Flag comes down. He reverses field, has blockers to the right side. 40, 45, 50. This one might be coming back in the hold. Other side, 30. Outside the numbers to the 20. Now to the 15 and falls forward to the 12. This one's coming all the way back, though. That swing pass went to the left, Brian. He reversed field, had blockers in front, and all that energy expended. He's going to need uh, some kind of sports drink to replenish because this one's coming way back. Yeah, that's, it's really unfortunate because that was a great cutback. I mean, he really didn't have anything to work with, and he just used his ability to run to the opposite side of the field. And, uh, just so happened to be one of them, uh, one of his offensive lineman teammates um, held him back, Mike, but a, a huge run. But that has got to be devastating uh, to move them back uh, that many yards. And you, you like the play call because it worked on the, on the near side of the football field, so why not just flip it to the opposite right. side? And they've done that a lot all night with a lot of these plays. They really have. Flipping it around, hey, it works one time, try it again. But uh, now two penalties in the last three plays, including that on the opening uh, kickoff uh, after the score. So... Now Miramar with 9.30 left to play within this fourth quarter, down 17-13. Ball is at their own 10-yard line, moving left to right. Genty in the shotgun, has time to throw, and he hits his receiver. It looked like Robinson right there, or Avon rather, close to the 20-yard line. He was delivered a big hit by the defensive back. Looked like Lucas Gallup. Got nine, but it'll be a second down about 15. You got to like what Miramar's doing because they've got the talent on them. Give the football to them in the open field. Have them make, uh, miss a couple of tackles. And so far, they've been successful with that. Here's a little dump off to the right to Rigby, and he's bottled up, goes nowhere. That was really his uh, check down route. He had uh, nowhere to go with the ball, did uh, the quarterback Nick Genty. Meanwhile, Rigby was just kind of like his last option, and there was no gain on that play, and it looks like Alex Montgomery is down again. Yeah, he's injured as it already was, and uh, playing on the defensive side of the ball, too, you're going to hurt yourself. 
uh, when you're out there. Usually you want to limit your reps instead of maximizing your reps, Mike, as we have a U18 sports injury timeout. Sideline by an injury, keep your athlete on the field and away from the sidelines by visiting U18 Sports Medicine. With an award-winning staff and newly opened first-of-its-kind facility in Miramar and Coral Springs, U18 can treat injury any injury on site. Visit U18SportsMedicine.com. Look for them on Facebook. Also brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet's got nine models that offer an estimated 32 miles per gallon highway or better. Visit your local South Florida Chevy dealer in Broward, Dade, and Monroe counties to test drive a Chevy Cruze or the brand new Chevy Spark. Yeah, Mon <coughs> Montgomery might be uh, cramping up. He's just uh, a uniform uh, which entered this game all white now has uh, a lot of different shades of brown and black dirt on it. Uh, whoever does the uh, dry cleaning is going to have to earn his uh, keep tonight. Yeah, that's going to need two cycles for sure. Yeah, but, uh, at least. Double rinse, too. You know you know, it's a big-time game when a player of, the, of that caliber is playing both sides of the ball. He's playing hurt. Like this in district game, I know we mentioned it a lot tonight because it's really, really important um, in, in this district uh, with Western – uh, three nothing or three and zero on the season. They're tough too. They're going to be playing both of these teams. You don't want to have that one loss because you need to get into the playoffs. It's hard to believe, but between Miramar, Cypress Bay, and Western this year, one of these teams will not go to the postseason. All right, so Nick Genty will set up this third down little dump off to Sean Avant, and he got a couple of yards, not enough. Game of seven to the 26 yard line, and now uh, for. Miramar, they are going to be in the punt formation here on this fourth down. It'll be about a fourth down and eight, and a good hold by Cypress Bay. They were helped out by the penalty. And if I'm the if I'm the coaches, I may hold off Alex Montgomery on this drive. He's got to get a breather. Absolutely, this should be a drive that the Cypress Bay offense uh, runs the football, try to take some uh, time um, off the clock. And, and, and I'll tell you something, Brian. This might be a time now. Where you and there's a timeout on the field. We'll take one with them. Seven five seven left to go in this fourth quarter. It's Cypress Bay seventeen, Miramar thirteen on QAM. This is your home for Miami Hurricanes football. I took out the third and I put in the fuck. I left. with the Chevy Love It or Return It Guarantee. If you don't love it, you can return it. Man, I've gotten really good at cutting deals. They sure have. Text on the license and Chevy Back in five seconds, I'm putting you on right now. I'm putting you on right now. You're on, you're on, you're on. Tony uh, just came back uh, uh, to miss a uh, punt return by Marquise Dudley Gordon. Got a block in the back coming up on Cypress Bay. So kind of chaos on the field after uh, retrieved the ball at his own 30 and then uh, went backwards 70 yards. We've seen a lot of that tonight. Uh, it's funny. Uh, you, know, you, you see it on the highlights with the professionals. They can run back 15 and get the angle, but uh, unfortunately at the high school level, it doesn't always work that way. So now Cypress Bay will be pinned deep, but Brian, they have a four-point lead on the road at Miramar, and in order to get this win, I think they need to I think they need to go back to old-fashioned Cypress Bay football, pound and ground. And, and now, I don't know, that doesn't mean to go conservative. I like the passing approach sideline to sideline, but you don't need to do these, you know, deep drops for Geronta Lewis looking to go deep. Keep it, you know, between the sidelines on the passes. See if you can feed days. And now Josh Kaiser, who's a hot runner, he had the last touchdown. You're definitely going to need to run it outside. They haven't been able to get anything going in between the tackles. As it looks like Geronta Lewis is going to keep this up the middle for a pretty hefty gain. Yeah, how about that? Geronta Lewis. And uh, he gets up to the 20 or the 19 yard line. Yeah, maybe they'll call it the 20. That was a gain of uh, about eight yards on just a little keeper, Brian. He lowered the shoulder, almost kind of was running blind. You know, he was running with his helmet down and got eight yards on a QB uh, runner up the gut straight to the 20 yard line. And with 7.17 to go, Cypress Bay would love nothing more than to take up the three, four minutes off this clock. It's going to be tough to do if not had too many time consuming drives tonight. You have Goldborn, the 
far receiver. Montgomery is the slot. Here's the give to Days. He's got a first down and a little bit more. A couple of yards up the middle to the 24-yard line. That's a first down. He was tackled by Jermaine Grays. So there's one on the board. That's a first down for Cypress Bay. They've got a couple more. It'll take a few more minutes off. 6.58, 6.57, clock moving here as the chains readjusted. 17-13, Cypress Bay. As Miramar in jeopardy of falling to 2-3, and three, the 2009 state champions. More importantly, to get that district loss. I mean, that's going to be very big in uh, this uh, in this district. Western playing as good as they are. And Durante Everglades. Lewis keeping it again, and he gets some productive yards before he's stood up. They were not unable to tackle him, but he still uh, got some yardage there. And again, it keeps the clock moving. We're seeing a frustrated Miramar defense pushing a little bit of Cypress by Bay players around. They need to play smart. They can't get any more penalties. Mike entering uh, right now, 11 penalties, 95 yards. This Miramar defense, uh, excuse me, this Miramar team as a whole um, has allowed. They've been just three and nine on third downs. All right, timeout on the field. We'll take another one with them. 6.20 left to go. Cypress Bay 17, Miramar 13 on QAM. You're listening to the South Florida High School. We do sports. If you're not heading to David Buck. Samuels uh, made the tackle in there, and Jermaine Grace finished off days. So now it brings up a third and eight. And let's see where the official spot will be here. About the, looks like the 26-yard line. So, Brian, biggest third down of the season here for Miramar on defense. You can also say vice versa on offense for Cypress Bay. Each of these teams want to know in the district, and the winner will take a huge step towards the playoffs. And with five and a half to go here in Miramar, Cypress Bay would love to uh, send this home crowd unhappy. Third down and eight, Geronte Lewis under center. And now another flag stoppage flies. going on. A flag flies, this will be a delay game. Boy, oh boy. You don't want that on a third and eight in your own territory. That's a senior mistake that Lewis has to recognize. Absolutely, following that uh, negative run, they had a lot of time for Geronte Lewis to be on the sideline to get that play and get on there. Not too uh, sure why there wasn't a sense of urgency, yeah. uh, but they line up in the same formation. Um, in, in a third and long right now, 5.17 on the clock. I, I think this is where you just run it up the middle, punt the ball. So it's a third and 14. Here's an inside give to Kaiser. Kaiser's trying to go to the outside. He's thrown down by Jermaine Grace like a rag doll. Nowhere for Kaiser to go. Jermaine Grace closed out that outside left lane. And now Cypress Bay will punt the ball away with five minutes on the clock. And that's plenty of time if you're... If you're Miramar right now, not to panic, to run the football, to do what you have been doing to score uh, 13 points on there. You're down four, so you got to get a touchdown right now. That missed extra point um, earlier in this game uh, has been a huge disadvantage for them because you like to have a field goal put you um, in a tie. But for right now, get this football away and see uh, what you can do. Maybe Cypress Bay uh, may give you some penalties. Nice pump by Stephen Twaity. That'll be taken by Rigby at the 30, outside to the 40, trying to cut it back near side, following his blockers to the 45-50. Here he goes, 45-40, outside the numbers to the 30, cutting it back midfield. He's got some open room. He's going to go all the way. How about that to the five? Now he fumbles the football, and was he down at the five-yard line? Wow. 
Boy, Mike, he was wide in for the end zone. He was going to score, and then he turned literally backwards and tried to walk backwards into the end zone. Got tackled, lost the football, but they say he was down by contact. But Mike, the man had the real estate, only he walked backwards to try to showboat in this district game. That is huge. Eric Pittman nearly went to the house. And Brian, uh, it's huge. Eric Pittman nearly went to the house. And Brian, I mean, was it show, was it slowing up the showboat, or did he feel someone on him and try and cut uh, cut back? I th yeah, it might have been your. He right turned on. around yeah. backwards. And you think it's because it was the show? Yeah, you're, yeah. There was a guy trailing him a couple yards away, but I think you're right. I think it was more of the uh, oh my god, can you believe what I just have done here? Yeah, okay. Well. The, uh, the line of scrimmage is about the five. Here's a pitch to Alex Lee on the right side. Flag comes down. Lee is about at the goal line. Take it down at the one. This one will be coming back here. So the line of scrimmage was at the, let's see here, at the uh, six-yard line. It'll be a holding on Miramar. Wow, Brian, how about that? Can you believe what Eric Pittman just did? I mean, it was a great return, and he really set his team up to succeed. Now you got the ball um, inside, deep into the territory. That's something you move the ball more than that offense would have done in, in four minutes' time. You really set yourself up there, and you're still in a good situation. Um, and this is an uh, injury timeout, as it looks like a player's hurt. But he, absolutely, I mean, he was just running up and down that field. Did an excellent turn. He saw that he had open real estate and then tried to showboat a little bit and turning around and didn't realize the Cypress Bay player was right was there right to tackle him, yeah. him because see, he was why, turned around. See, I thought he turned around initially to go around the guy instead of the showboating and obviously uh, <laughs> that'd be like me running you and you're so fast you say yeah. I can beat you running backwards Brian. Right, right. It was that kind of situation and then you say okay you're on the one yard line we can just punch it in right now for a touchdown but then a holding backs that up now this six yard line Mike it makes things a lot more interesting than it would have been. Line, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Backing him up 10 yards like that, it, it really uh, has you scratching your head, and it's got to have you frustrated. And the fans here on the Miramar sideline, they still haven't stopped talking after that play. So Eric Pittman goes 55 yards to the five-yard line, turns around to kind of showboat, and then a holding penalty on the first run. So it'll be uh, back at the 16-yard line, first to goal from the 16, and uh, this is really the uh, biggest drive of the season for both teams, defensively and and offensively, Miramar down 17 13, 402 to play. Genty and the shotgun split receivers each side. They're deep outside the numbers. Here's the give to Rigby, and he'll go straight ahead following his, his uh, guards up to about the 14 yard line. So he got two. That'll bring up a second down and goal from the 14. So now on the second down, Brian, you got to get some yards. Getting positive yards on that first down, still important. Move the football forward. And keep it up now. This six-yard line, Mike, it makes things a lot more interesting than it would have been. Line. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Backing them up 10 yards like that, it, it really uh, has you scratching your head, and it's got to have you frustrated. And the fans here on the Miramar sideline, they still haven't stopped talking after that play. So Eric Pittman goes... 55 yards of the five-yard line, turns around to kind of showboat, and then a holding penalty on the first run. So it'll be uh, back at the 16-yard line, first and goal from the 16, and uh, this is really the uh, biggest drive of the season for both teams, defensively and, and offensively. Miramar down 17-13, 402 to play. Genty and the shotgun split receivers each side. They're deep outside the numbers. Here's the give to Rigby, and he'll go straight ahead following his his uh, guards up to about the 14-yard line, so he got two. That'll bring up a second down and goal from the 14. So now on the second down, Brian, you got to get some yards. Getting positive yards on that first down, still important. Move the football forward. And keep this in mind now. You are in field goal range for Miramar, but that blocked extra point early in the game, looming large here, you're down four. So a field goal does nothing for you. Very interesting play right there. They were lined up. The center turned back around, literally got up off the line, talked to the quarterback, told him something we needed audible, and now he's still talking to him. They may have to burn a timeout, but no, he's going ahead and tell him to snap the football, and he uh, throws it over the quarterback's head. A high snap to Genty. It goes all the way back to the 35-yard line. He, he drops it trying to pick it up. Cypress Bay's got it. Or did they call him down? Genty trying to pick it up, went down to his knees. Are they going to call him down, or whose ball is it? They should call him down, Mike. He was down on the ground. He had his hand on the football. Yeah, so uh, that'll be a loss of 18. 
on the play. Hey, that's better than giving it up. But boy, oh boy, that, that should have been a timeout call there. Yeah, to relay what happened, the offensive line was set. The center was down there, and he was seeing the block. He was trying to tell his quarterback in shotgun formation, literally got up, turned around, talked to his quarterback, told him that's not going to happen. Quarterback said just snap the football, snap the football, and the center was not in the right frame of mind and to snap it. now there's a timeout, Miramar. It should have happened when your center comes out. It's one thing, Brian, sometimes you'll just see them turn the neck when he literally gets out of his crouch, walks two steps backwards so that you're pretty much in, uh, in smelling their breath distance. That's a problem when the center does that. That should have been immediate timeout. Instead, this uh, drive, Brian, which – really started with that punt return by Eric Pittman, who for some unknown reason, as you mentioned, turned around at the five to just kind of glorify what uh, he was uh, about to do and score. From then on, it's been a disaster. And you don't say it too often. A third and goal from the 36-yard line. You really got your work <laughs> cut out for you right now. Boy, oh, boy. In a four-down territory. And yeah, that's got to be absolutely frustrating. And now you, you know. got to put the ball in the air, I'll tell you that. I mean, even if you get 15 yards back, it's still a long way to go. So third and goal from the 36. Cypress Bay on the road trying to pull the uh, the win here in Miramar up by four. And now for Miramar, remember, right before that play, Michael Allender was a pretty good kicker for Miramar. Maybe not uh, Jonathan Semarine, but he would have been in position. But, again, that early uh, first half blocked extra point by Cypress Bay. Looming large here as Miramar now has to score a TD to win this game. Genty in the shotgun. With time, pressure comes as he throws, fires over the middle. It is almost intercepted. Great coverage by Dion Holman. That pass looked like it was intended for uh, Sean Avant, and Holman on that underthrown ball went up for it, nearly brought it in, but he batted it down like a volleyball spike, and that sets up now a fourth down and goal from the 36. And my great energy we're having from uh, at, here at Miramar Stadium. Nobody sitting down, everybody standing up, both sides of the ball. We're seeing the Cypress Bay fans up and up and screaming. We're seeing the Miramar fans getting up and screaming. People are into this football game right here at this stadium. We're hoping uh, you out there listening are feeling the same way. A huge district game right now. The energy uh, out here, absolutely phenomenal. 2.49 left to go here, fourth and goal from the 36. Gentry's gonna have to go for broke. Throws it long and deep into the end zone, and it is intercepted in the end zone by Alex Montgomery. No chance there for Sean Avant. They were bracketing him, and that one is pulled down cleanly for the interception. Alex Montgomery, the wide receiver who's going to Wake Forest, showed his defensive back skills, and this game's not over yet. Still 240 remaining, and uh, I believe, uh, what do we have down here? Uh, one timeout left for uh, Miramar? Yeah, Mike, and... Uh... Man, you've seen some football before, but that was absolutely crazy. A great return on the Miramar side and uh, side of things in about the six-yard line, um, uh, him being tackled. And next thing you know, a holding penalty backed it up. Then some miscommunication between the center and quarterback backed him up all the way to set up a third and goal on the 36-yard line for Cypress Bay right now uh, with 240 to go. They have to hold on on this football and not turn it over. And Geronta Lewis will just uh, fall forward. Might have lost the ball momentarily and just fell on the uh, lost snap there. It fell forward about a yard. So second down and nine. Two timeouts left for Miramar. 2.15 to play. So really, if you're thinking here, one first down, Brian, should ice it for Cypress Bay. But assuming they run again, which we think they will, Miramar calls timeout. They got a shot. Again, we've seen the prowess of the punt returning by Eric Pittman. But one first down should do it for CB. Two minutes to go trying to get a win on the road is Cypress Bay. Here's the pitch to Matt Days outside right. He's carrying the pile upfield to the 30-yard line. And he looked like he fumbled the football at the 33-yard line. The ball is loose. Miramar's got it. Oh, my goodness gracious. Matt Days just trying to turn the corner and stay inbounds. Trying to get those extra yards, Brian. Fumbled the football as he was hit from behind. Can you believe this? Miramar is still alive. Unbelievable. That was the last thing Cypress Bay needed. Avoid the contact. Get your knee down and hold on to that football. It's what we said in the first snap. And what happens on play number two, he coughs that football up. And Miramar has that life. And more importantly, they have some momentum now. They have some energy. Mike, uh, I mean, it's just uh, this fourth quarter alone has been worth it. It's been worth the price of admission, that's for sure. Miramar with a buck 47 left. Now this is probably their last drive 
at the 35-yard line of Cypress Bay. Genty dropping back, looking to set up a screen. It's intercepted. Cypress Bay going the other way. 50, 45, and down out of bounds. What a play by Keon Auguste. The defensive lineman read the screen, and he read it beautifully. He acted like the running back undercut that route, and Keon Auguste picks off the pass from Nick Genty back-to-back -back throws by the Miramar quarterback resulting in interceptions and now that could be the icing on the proverbial kick. Well you got to tip your hat off uh, to the young uh, Auguste the junior coming in there as you had uh, perfectly alluded to in, in knowing the screen as he played fundamental defense he was able to step forward. He had an open shot at the quarterback, yep, but he but also he, he saw retreated. that running back yep. coming out, and he Beautiful said, well, maybe read. if I step back, I can catch this football. So a, a good throw by Jaunty. He didn't see him out there. He, he did what he needed to do. Yeah, but um, you know what? He should have seen it because he was looking right at uh, that that lane where – and there was a smart play by Augusta. He, he was running up hard, and then all of a sudden he stopped knowing that, hey, he's got pressure coming from the other side. He dropped back, read that screen beautifully, and that's what all that offseason work for Mark Londolo did for this team. He didn't want him to go to seven-on-sevens, Brian. He wanted him to keep him on campus, do the extra uh, work, do those few extra things, you know, each day to really get this team ready to meet the expectations. And Cypress Bay is 97 seconds away from winning in Miramar. It is 17-13 Lightning. Boy, very, uh, you, you know, Guandolo was telling his team during that timeout, hold on to the football. And from the 45 of Miramar is just a QB, QB, uh, QB keeper by Jorante Lewis straight ahead for about three. Uh, Miramar should have a timeout or two. That was according to the coaches. However, that may not be right. Boy, and now that oh clock is ticking, 120 to go. People heading out. Mike, this was a, a huge district game. Both of these teams wanted to win it, but you saw aggressiveness on both sides of the ball. Um, everybody um, just really doing an excellent job getting to it, Mike. But, boy, what a change of events. You had an excellent punt return where the runner was able to go into the end zone if he wanted to. Instead, turned around a little bit and got cut out short. Um, and just like that, uh, Cypress Johnson Bay looks like they, <laughs> they're going to come away with, away with this victory. And it's very lucky, Mike, because they had a runner that would have gone against them late in the fourth quarter with open real estate into the end zone and didn't pull through. And Cypress Bay, just one more run, and that will do it. So I, there's no timeouts left for Miramar. 40 seconds left, clock moving. Wow. I tell you something. Keon Auguste has uh, made a couple of plays tonight, and now Miramar finally calls a timeout. You'd think that would have come earlier. Um, it's uh, For Cypress Bay, you know, their offense has been choppy at times. They've not gotten a lot on the run. The passing game was sporadic. Uh, we saw uh, Montgomery, you know, the, the receiver, have some good, you know, connections with Geronte Lewis, but at the end of the day, this Cypress Bay defense, I think, surprised a lot of people as to how good they were against the run. They got enough pressure to, uh, to bottle up Nick Genty. They gave up 13 points tonight on the road. That's a pretty good effort. When it matters most, Miramar had their way on Cypress Bay. They had them right where they wanted them, and they were doing some good jobs in the fourth quarter, driving down, getting touchdowns, giving the ball to their players on the open field. Mike, Miramar, when their players are out on the open field, it's hard to tackle them. They're just flat-out speed on you. But they made and sure that's to what bottle them up on and the then, inside. And then yeah. on that punt return, that's exactly what happened. He was able to run all the way down the field, Mike. If he holds on to that football and he gets into that end zone, we're Could saying ball game. Miramar's ball winning game. right now. Absolutely. It, absolutely. And, and a bonehead play like that to turn around, showboat, it's just it's no business being in a game this game. Nope. This is a playoff atmosphere game, Mike. You don't do plays like that in the playoffs. No, no, you don't. And uh, you know what? It cost him the uh, the game tonight. Here's the give to Days. He's got the first down and more. As this time he holds on to the football upfield at the 30. And uh, you know what? Eric Pittman's a junior, so you'd like to think he would know uh, by that. But uh, – Boy, oh boy, yeah. If he doesn't turn around and showboat at the five, he's in. And you know what? Cypress Bay uh, may not win this game, but they're going to come out of here as uh, Miramar cannot stop the clock. They'll just watch the clock stop momentarily here. 17-13, Cypress Bay will walk out of here with a victory. As Geronte Lewis takes the knee, and that should do it. So the Cypress Bay Lightning will improve to 4-1 and 2-0 and and oh in the district. Miramar will fall to 2-3 and three overall and 1-1 one and one in the district. Congratulations to Mark Londola. What a great win for an outstanding head coach. And, uh, you know, they've got some big expectations here for the Lightning, Brian. Uh, they have really not had a set of three guys like this, a quarterback, a running back, and a wide receiver, who uh, will all go play D1. At the very least, Days and Montgomery will. And uh, Geronte Lewis probably right behind him. 
you know, it may not be uh, ever again for Cypress Bay to have this prolific of a trio, and this was the year that they had to make uh, use of it, and so far, midway through the season, so so good. Yeah, absolutely, Mike, and uh, this is uh, this has got to be one of the big ones up there in Cypress Bay history in terms of regular season victories coming on the road, defeating Mayor Marr, who was the champions uh, last year in this district. Um, and a good rivalry, Mike. I mean, Miramar has been 4-0 against Cypress Bay. Last year alone, uh, handed Cypress Bay two losses uh, and, and blowing them out in one of those victories. So for Coach Guandolo, uh, you, you know he's going to be uh, really happy with his performance uh, going on the road, beating Miramar, a team he hasn't beaten in two years. Yeah, <clears throat> no doubt about that. So that's the final score. Cypress Bay 17, Miramar 13, and Cypress Bay taking a huge step. Uh, towards the playoffs with this win. They go to 2-0 in the district. We'll be back for the post-game show after this, brought to you by Sir Pizza here on Sports Radio 560 QAM. You're listening to the South Florida High School Football Show. Yo, we got...